You're listening to Cross Rhythms Plymouth, 96.3 FM, and uh, this is Life Stories. It's my favourite show that I get to do here on the station, and today is certainly no different. I'm joined in the studio, which is always nice as well, it's better than Zoom, uh, by a guest, uh, a local lady who some of you might know, it's uh, Emma Marlowe. Uh, Emma, it's great to have you here. We've had some conversations off air on the phone. It's been great to get to know you a little bit, and really pleased that you're here to do a Life Stories interview. Um, before we start with the, the kind of what we want to talk about in the interview could you just introduce yourself a bit about what you do for work and as well how you came to faith and what that means for you okay so uh and emma and uh, married to carl we've been married 25 years now uh have three children that are uh, much more grown up now i suppose really uh yeah. tom's our eldest 24 uh abby is 17 uh so we're just doing the learning to drive thing yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> expensive uh, yeah yeah <laughs> and they're back in, but she's very good she's very good and um and james as well who i'm going to tell you a little bit more about later on mm. uh so i've worked at plymouth christian center for about 10 years now in a variety of roles i've worked in the nursery there as the administrator um and more recently now is the administrator in the church mm. um and also with a real passion and a heart for pastoral care love it and for you personally then obviously working in a church so faith mm-hmm. is a big part of yeah. your life which we will come to as well because yeah. of, of the story you want to talk about but tell us for you when did you come to faith did you grow up in a christian home was it a, a journey from not knowing about faith how did that start for you yeah so um i wasn't brought up in a christian home so we did that i remember my mum saying prayers with me at bedtime and yeah. uh, went to brownies and did church prayed and that kind of thing but i didn't actually have a personal faith it was very much um, hearing Bible stories and things. I went to a C of E primary school. So yeah, it was yeah. almost like folk tales. For right. Me. I think that's the best Just way. Just like I cultural could. knowledge. Yeah, sort of stuff. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but it didn't seem relevant to yeah. me in that day. And yeah. then it was years later when I was about 16, I went to City College and I met a friend also called Emma and she was a Christian and we would we would be just some friends you just know that you're going to end up doing life with them. And, um, and Emma has been that friend and she just she just professed and she just we talked about Jesus and there was just something different about her. And then over the years, God brought different people into our lives. And um, wow. yeah, and we gave our lives to Jesus, um, which was just amazing, really. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I can't say it was a, a Damascus road sure. for me. It was a bit of a gradual journey. And I think probably a um, surrendering, surrendering my own stuff. Mm. Um it's not easy to do it is it it's no, no. uh yeah, you yeah, know yeah. you hold on to all your own stuff that you quite like but actually it is in conflict with what jesus wants for you yeah yeah but um and i'd met carl as well my husband before we became christians right and um i actually thought he was going to chuck me if i told him i'd become a christian right but, uh, so it felt like you know i had to kind of sacrifice that really so when i did tell him i'd become a christian he was like oh thank goodness I feel the same and I didn't have to tell what? you so it was just oh that's awesome God was in it but it felt a bit like a um Abraham yeah uh, you had to be willing to surrender yeah, I suppose yeah in that absolutely sense. and so since then it's been a, a steady journey mm-hmm. um with perhaps different seasons where you you grow and different seasons where you don't move in your faith quite so fast yeah um, yeah, yeah. yeah and then obviously these last sort of seven years have yeah. been have been quite different yeah and, uh, quite yeah, we've we've experienced the presence of God in quite a different way. Yeah. Well, do you know what? I love the fact that you start it by saying that because um, actually, you know, what we're going to talk about is it's not easy on, mm-hmm. on one hand, mm-hmm. um, is the fact that your son James uh, had a battle with cancer that sadly ended in him passing away. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, for many people, they'd say, gosh, well, what's the point of faith in light of that? Why mm-hmm. would you hold on to faith? Um, for you, you just said we've been through seven years where we've experienced the presence of God in a different way and in a more profound way. So we're going to kind of expand on that journey. I feel like, you know, I love what you shared about your testimony and your husband finding faith. I feel like we could do another interview just about that because <laughs> that sounded really cool in and of itself. But um, but I mean, tell us a little bit of an overview then as to the journey you have been on and, and some of okay. those some of those details. OK, so uh, back in 2016, we were like fairly regular family, three children just going about our daily lives doing our things kids in school and um james developed a pain in his right knee and uh and he'd grown he'd done that thing where boys grow like a foot in about a year yeah so he very tall six foot four then and we just thought he'd got growing pains um but he was limping and uh we took him to the gp and the gp was like i think we just need to give him physio um the physio wait was quite a long 
time. It was mm. a couple of months, you know, NHS is under strain, isn't it? And uh, our father-in-law said, you know, this poor lad, he's on crutches here. I'm going to I'm gonna pay for him to see somebody. Mm. So uh, he saw one of the consultants at the Nuffield, the private hospital here in Plymouth. And um, he said, oh, yeah, I think it's a ligament damage. I'm going to... I'm going to do an MRI and I think it's probably going to be like corrective surgery. I think it's quite a common complaint for teenagers uh, when they grow quickly. And so he had this MRI scan and, you know, God was in it. Even then, we've got three children. So when you take a child for an appointment, Mm. as parents, one of you is usually at home making the tea for the other two. You never normally get to go together. But on this occasion, Carl and I were both there. <clears throat> and um, James went in, he was ages, and he came out and he said, something's not quite right. But before he came out, the consultant said, can you come and speak to me in the office a minute? So we went in with him and he said, I'm really sorry we found something. And we absolutely had no idea. And he said, I found this growth. And we were like, oh. And then he mentioned the word cancer. And we were like, well, how certain are you? It's cancer. And he went, it's cancer. Wow. And uh, we were just, just blown away anyway james came in and he said oh i know something's wrong because they kept me in there Mm. for ages Mm. um and yeah we were just we were just blown away and i think james even the consultant said afterwards i think james took the news better than we did Mm. we were just yeah yeah, side side yeah completely blown away completely but even in that the consultant wasn't meant to be in the building on that day right and uh that he happened to be there and um yeah, just was able to yeah, give yeah, us yeah. the answers we needed. Yeah. You know, so, at that time. Yeah, I mean, that is, you know, for most people, the most devastating news mm-hmm. they could possibly get mm-hmm. for any mm-hmm. loved one, but yeah. for a child especially, it's something that you have only in your nightmares and you yeah. kind of never think is going to happen mm-hmm. to you, but they're facing it. Um, I can only imagine what that's like. We're going to stop for some music and we'll talk more with Emma uh, about kind of how things progressed, how things developed. You know, I guess some of the questions you had around faith, where was God at that time, some of those early stages and um, and what that looked like for you. So we'll talk more after this. You're listening to Cross Rhythms Plymouth 96.3 FM and this is Life Stories uh, and I'm in the studio with Emma Marlowe and uh, Emma you shared a bit about your testimony a little bit and uh, who you are in the city some people will know you from PCC from your work there um, and I guess just being involved in the life of the church for quite a long time and you mentioned um, sort of towards the end of the last section that the last seven years of your life and particularly your Christian life have been one where you've encountered the presence of God in quite a profound way. I really felt that was quite a profound thing to introduce it because those are the years in which your son had cancer mm-hmm. um, and sadly lost his life to cancer as well. Yeah. And so for anyone to introduce it as that, I think is remarkable. And, and we're kind of going to touch on that as we go through. But would you mind telling us a little bit about some of those early stages when you found out the news? You, you touched on it in the first section, but yeah. that's any parent's worst nightmare, really. Yeah. Um, and what was it that helped you to get through that how did faith play a role in that and um and what were those kind of stages like for you yeah i mean i guess the biggest thing that you fear when you're told that your child has got cancer is that they're going to die sure um you know they they gave us statistics which weren't great um that james's prognosis wasn't great um Mm. and uh, you know it was just it was quite overwhelming really um how how to face that but I think yeah I think really you have nothing else or you can rely on his God because that's the only rock that there is there is nothing else that you can hang on to um and I I think you one of the things that we learned very early on and we carried on with throughout the the seven years really is um you can't worry about tomorrow Mm. it just has to be today I remember our pastor Jeff said to us about the quote by Corrie Ten Boom about worrying about tomorrow is trying to carry tomorrow in today's strength wow. at the same time like both at the same time and and it's just so right you know you can't tomorrow is tomorrow today is today yeah. and you live on what you're living in today really um mm. so that was the that was perhaps one of the things that got us through um day by day this kind of not living under fear of the future because you just don't want to have that sense of regret yeah that you've missed an opportunity yeah 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 and i know um that the community around you prayer Mm -hmm. made a huge difference i suppose Mm -hmm. the people that you turn to and Mm -hmm. 
that kind of communal sense of faith as well. Do you yeah. want to tell us a bit more about what that was like? Yeah, I mean, we set we set up a blog uh, just partly really to keep everybody up to date. So we had family and friends and things near and far, and uh, the church we go to is is a big church, um, yeah. and you wanted to make sure that everybody was having the same information, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we started a blog, and it became a bit of a platform, really, for like expressing uh, God's presence in the whole situation in the whole circumstance you know and in our experience and what we were going through um and almost a little bit of a i suppose an evangelistic tool really. yeah you know there were people that were non-christians that were reading it and um you know we tried to look at this journey through the lens of what of jesus really and wow. and how he was um using this situation so yeah, you know, what we assume is for bad, actually, God does turn it around for good. But that sense of community, I mean, I just think people were the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm. They just carried us where mm. we couldn't carry ourselves, um, where everything seemed so bleak. There was one occasion when I was in the hospital with James. Uh, Carl must have been back in Plymouth with the other two. And just this huge sense of anxiety, like, ripped through me. Like, I was shaking. I couldn't pick up my coffee cup. Yeah. And um, I texted out a few people and said, would you just pray? Because I just don't know. James was asleep, thankfully, at the time. And I was thinking, I can't be like this when he wakes up. I can't be like this. And uh, I remember praying and... Or I remember asking people to pray. And then when, like, this sense of peace just enveloped the room, really... Um, and it was the it was the prayer of the saints you know it was just incredible yeah 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 that's incredible stuff and um i think the way in which you interact with faith is kind of shaped through those seasons isn't it and mm. some stuff becomes sharper becomes mm. more real through that i love what you said uh, a quote from cory tenboom because obviously anyone who knows uh cory's story is you know through the second world war those atrocities mm -hmm. you know we all face suffering one way or another yeah. and i think for some people the biggest stumbling block to faith can be suffering but equally mm -hmm. in the face of suffering as you said like mm -hmm. what else do you have apart from god yeah that's quite a profound thing yeah. do you feel like some things became more real kind of sharper more in focus in those in those times yeah. in that sense yeah i mean one of the things i i think really happened is is that refining process is you kind of really do start to think about what's important yeah and what's not important and yeah, yeah. um and just that burning off you know that burning off of the stuff don't sweat the small stuff it's the big things that really that really matter um and then what is the big thing yeah and the big thing is jesus isn't it you know yeah. and what is our purpose here on this earth you know um to love god and have fellowship with each other and all of a sudden that becomes that becomes the yeah. focus love it love it i'm going to talk more with uh, emma right after this you're listening to cross rhythms plymouth 96.3 fm and this is life stories i'm in conversation uh with emma marlow talking uh about uh quite a profound process really that you went through very painful difficult process uh, of your son uh, having cancer going through that journey of cancer the ups and the downs uh, and there were some ups I will talk yeah. about it a bit in this section a bit about some of the journey that you took with that um, and and how you've kind of come through that and how faith has been such a key part how God's been so real through those things mm -hmm. uh, as you talked about in that last section I wondered if you'd start this section by telling us a bit about James about what he's like you know what he was like <laughs> growing up and yeah. um, I guess what his faith was like as well was yeah. faith present for him was that yeah. something that he shared in yeah. I love the blogs that you talked about did he engage in that what was what was he yeah. like yeah uh well James um was a real extrovert actually a real yeah. people person yeah. a real chatterbox I wonder where he gets that from <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah really all about people very fun loving sees the moment this is you know it's today this yeah, yeah. this is what we can do today um and he was brought up you know we brought him up um in a christian home we prayed um he made a commitment for himself when he was about six or seven um professed that jesus was lord but to be honest as he got to his teenage years he did waver a bit you know the pressures and the the um the draw of the world really um but he always knew um what his faith was and interestingly um 
he would have a girlfriend and he always brought them to Alpha and it became a really? bit of a yeah whenever he started dating somebody he'd like invite them to Alpha okay. which was like you know really <laughs> as good as a date or as a uh, no not <laughs> no. as a date but right. it was yeah. <laughs> but he brought them because it was like he just really wanted them to know yeah. what it was all about what really yeah, was yeah. important sure. um, but yeah he did like to go out and he did like to party and yeah, things yeah. like that but obviously as things got a bit more serious yeah. later on um yeah he he knew exactly where he was going um mm. and he said that and i think he'd said it to our pastor jeff as well on one visit he said i know where i'm going and um yeah. you know i know where i'm headed yeah, and yeah, yeah. uh if i if i survive this then all well and good but if i don't i know where i'm going that's and, so um, good yeah and i i think knowing that is one of the most reassuring things that actually this isn't it mm. that this isn't the final end of it all yeah absolutely i mean that's a really key point of the yeah. interview when we spoke on the phone yeah. when we first spoke i know that was a huge thing for yeah. you and um as we've talked about off air you know the thought of eternity the thought of life after mm -hmm. death the thought mm -hmm. of the promises of the christian faith yes. in that yeah. They're amazing and they're stuff that we cling to as Christians, but yeah. they're kind of theory until you're faced with it, aren't yeah. they? And they're stuff that we don't want to talk about. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I just wondered if you'd elaborate on what that's meant to you now yeah. in the light of him not making it through. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and just some of those those yeah. subject areas, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's since James has passed away, I think in those final weeks when we knew that things weren't quite going as we wanted, um, mm. James... Um, reconnected with God in a in a very different way you know in his final weekend he was at home and um and I can remember on the Saturday which was the day before he died Carl and I were praying for him and he just like was reaching out to heaven he just he knew where he was destined but he wasn't fearful mm. at all and um I was saying to him James you know just about saying my goodbyes and how much I loved him and James was like mum don't make a big deal about it <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the kind of he was very yeah. very selfless yeah. um you know really selfless but he knew where he was going and yeah certainly my experience since then and our experience is the loss and the absence of him physically yeah. with us is huge of and course. um the disappointment that he's not here now yeah. continues um but the veil between heaven and earth feels very very thin and at sometimes it almost feels like translucent wow. is the best way i can describe it where um, you know, I've just had that sense in the spirit um, that he's okay. He's mm. in God's care. And in fact, you know, as a family, we, we say grace at tea time. And depending who's there and who's, you know, at mealtimes, we pray for whoever's at work or whatever. But we, we thank God that James is in his tender care mm. because mm. that's where we would want him to be. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a beautiful place to leave this section. We'll talk more with Emma uh, right after this. You're listening to Life Stories here on Cross Rhythms Plymouth. And uh, you join us midway through an interview with Emma Marlowe. And if you want to hear the kind of what we've talked about so far, uh, check out the website crossrhythms.co.uk slash Plymouth. Go to YouTube as well, Cross Rhythms Plymouth. You'll be able to catch it there uh, at your leisure. But uh, Emma, it's been a real pri uh, privilege really to talk to you and to hear your story uh, of faith, you know, to hear a little bit about your testimony. I, as I say, I feel like we could do a story on that. The, the story of you coming to faith was amazing in, in and of itself. But kind of faith being refined, as you said, um, yeah. through fire, through real challenge uh, yeah. in the last seven years yeah. um, with your son having cancer cancer diagnosis the journey of that and then dying in the last section we talked about death and we mm -hmm. talked about eternity we talked mm -hmm. about the fact that that becomes real for you is yeah. a real lived reality for yeah, you yeah. Um, and it's really beautiful but I wondered if you'd kind of share um, because I know for some people you know when you talk about Christianity there's all the talk about healing uh, holding out faith for that um, and inevitably there must have been a sense of disappointment because I imagine that would have been your mm -hmm. prayer mm -hmm. and also it did look like he was healed at one point yeah. could you tell yeah. us a bit about that season and how yeah. you kind of yeah. held on to God through some of those questions yeah, yeah. so there was uh, first of all to say that James um, actually was initially healed of the cancer so right. he had like four years uh, where um, he was well we yeah. did the three monthly checks and things but we were he was well and one of the things my husband said he said, we don't live in the shadow of cancer. Yeah. As, unless we hear otherwise, James is healed. And so we lived. And, and it was the best way to live, That's to be so honest good. with you, because we could have so easily said, oh, we're not going to arrange this, or we're not going to do that, or Just we're going to be case. afraid. Yeah, we're going to be fearful because this is going to happen. But actually, yeah. um, Carl was very 
no, it's over until we're told otherwise. And uh, for us, that was it. And James was approaching the kind of golden five years, which is when they say, when you're five years out, you're healed. Right. And that's it. Right. And he was on the approach to that, not far short of it. We thought we were home and dry. And then the cancer returned mm. um, very aggressively and caused lots of medical complications for James. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was a shock. It was a real shock that it had come back. Mm. Um, well, just in terms of, um, you know, how did you deal with that? Like, how did you hold mm -hmm. on to faith? Mm -hmm. Did you feel really disappointed, that kind yeah, of stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think initially disappointed. But, you know, there's a funny thing about when you're in such um, difficult situations like that, that everything gets so stripped back. And yeah. I have to say, our experience as well from that first nine months of James having treated, treatment was... Yes, it was the worst of times, but it was also the best of times. Mm. So there was an element that how awful it was going to be yeah, yeah, to yeah. have to go through this treatment again, um, that God was going to still provide us with nuggets and gems yeah. of golden moments, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but we knew that James's challenge was much harder. And they did tell us that because the cancer had returned, the chances of a, of a heal of him being completely healed were very mm. slim. Right. And um I think that's when we really kind of dug in to God, yeah, yeah, really yeah. pressed in yeah. in a much deeper way. Of course, we had COVID as well going on yes. at the same time. Right. Uh, so it was quite isolating. But it, the weird thing was... Um, it when it ever occurred, like, it was like yeah, right in COVID. Yeah, so it was tw August 2020. So we'd wow. all been living in lockdown for like four months. Gosh. We? And this happened. So it was, it was a bit more difficult because we weren't able to attend hospital appointments and yeah, such yeah. like with James. And... James was a character uh, that he wanted to protect us. He always wanted to protect us. And so he would with not withhold information, but he would always make it sound. He'd be, <laughs> well, they've told me this, but, you know, it's not that bad because. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. um, and it's like when he got told he would have to have his leg amputated, he had his leg amputated right up at the hip joint, a hindquarter amputation. And he was like, yeah, um, you know, I'm going to have my leg amputated, but I will get a motability car. You know, so it was just like, oh, yeah. you know, wow. every that coin. That says a lot about who he was. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, and it didn't stop him yeah. um, by losing his leg. I mean, there's TikToks out there right. of him at Plymouth Argyle right. jumping over seats and things like that, <laughs> like when Argyle have scored and, and it didn't stop him yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. Love it. That's amazing. Well, we'll stop for some music now and uh, talk more with Emma right after this. You're listening to Life Stories here on Cross Rhythms Plymouth, 96.3 FM. Uh, a real privilege to speak with Emma Marlowe about a difficult journey in your and your family's life. Um, but one of the things that you said off air when we spoke on the phone was that you kind of enjoy talking about it to some extent. Um, you enjoy sharing the highs and the lows, the reality of it. And one of the things that you said in the interview that you did that was really deliberate was to do a blog, um, yeah. obviously to keep a lot of people updated. But yeah. what was some of the benefits of doing that for you? Uh, and, and why did you kind of keep it going? Yeah, uh, so it started out that we did it, as you say, just to give people information yeah. uh, so that everybody was on the same page and everybody had the, the same understanding of what we were going through. But it kind of became a bit of a platform, really. Um, for us to show what God was doing mm. in those situations, um, it, it became quite therapeutic doing it. I used to, yeah. it was really good at helping me organize my thoughts yeah, um, yeah. as we would write it. I mean, we all wrote on it. Mm. Uh, Carl and James and myself all wrote on it um, and updated what was happening. Um, but James, uh, but yeah, I think probably I did most of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was, it was really therapeutic. I mean, it started off, uh, we were telling people about what was happening and, and how we could see God in it and how we were reaching out and how we were relying on him. Um, and then it became a journey. I mean, I've met people since who didn't know us and I've met them since James has passed away. And they said, I felt like I really knew you. Yeah, wow. Because of the blog. Wow. And, uh, and it felt like people were traveling the journey with us. Yeah, um, yeah. And people were really invested yeah, yeah. in their prayers yeah. and just in their love. That's you know, awesome. it was, yeah, that. I was I just going to say, it, it must have shown you how much people cared yeah, by yeah. how much time they would have spent yeah, reading yeah. it. Because yeah. you're like, wow, you're actually yeah. taking the time to properly yeah, look yeah. at this. Yeah. And my husband, Carl, said, you know, he, he said, oh, I don't think I'm an evangelist, but if this is how I can evangelize just by telling people love it. Um, about 
what's happening in our situation and where God is in our situation, then yeah, so yeah. be it. If this yeah. is the bit that I can do, yeah. Um, and so yeah, that was really that was really good. Um, but it it did just lift us, you know, that sense of community. I mean, God God created community, didn't He? And mm. one of the one of the biggest things to come out of this is I've never ever valued people as much as I value them yeah. now, and I can actually see that people color your world yeah they yeah, absolutely yeah. color your world um and each person brings their little bit and in that that perfectly woven tapestry god gives you what you need just in that situation yeah. in that circumstance that yeah, yeah. no other way you couldn't orchestrate it yeah, yeah, in a yeah. man-made way totally it can only be the power of the holy spirit that's awesome and um the blog you know you put it online so it's yeah. still up there yeah where can yeah. people find it if they're curious and want to kind of find out yeah a bit more? so it's on the wordpress uh, platform that's sure. the platform that we've used and it's called marlow one in a million yeah and it was called that because uh one in a million was the statistic of getting osteosarcoma which right. is a bone cancer which is what james had yeah, yeah. Um, and was diagnosed with yeah 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 so marlow one in a million so marlow m-a-r-l-o-w uh one, in a, one in a million search for that online and you'll you'll find it there um you know, one of the scriptures that I think is is really profound that I know Chris uh, Cole, who uh, presents Crossrooms Experience, does Art of Living and uh, founder of Crossrooms here, talks about a lot is John sixteen thirty three. It says, uh, in this world, you will have trouble, but take comfort. I've overcome the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think we've talked about it a bit before. We, we kind of it's so easy to brush off suffering or want to mm-hmm. keep it at arm's length. I mean, understandably, that's the right thing to do. Yeah. None of us want yeah. to suffer, but yeah. we do face that in one way or yeah, another. Yeah. And to go through such a profound season of suffering, mm-hmm. the second part of that, take yeah. heart, I've overcome the world, yeah. you know, linked to eternity, but also that sense of like, yeah, God's got this. Mm-hmm. That must have been mm-hmm. real comfort to you and must yeah, have yeah. become so real for you yeah. in, in those yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think until you're in that situation, there's not the weight on it that yeah. you have when you're in that once you're in that situation it carries so much more weight doesn't it and um yeah just that sense of i've overcome the world yeah, it yeah. just yeah god's god's won james is healed yeah he's in his eternal heavenly body two legs um you know yeah completely restored you yeah. know and and that just brings a huge amount of comfort yeah an absolute huge amount of comfort i can remember tom um, like in the early days after James passed away, uh, Tom, our eldest son, came to me and he went, Mum, I just need to know, remind me again, tell me again where James is mm. and tell me he's okay. That's I awesome. just want to be reminded yeah. of what he is and where he is yeah, and yeah, how yeah. he is. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, just this this sense of peace. I think one day, um, I, or one, it was one of the first times we were back in church and um, we'd like snuck in to church you know because it was just really difficult to to like even make conversation with people we were so broken after james died yeah and we were having communion and the sermon was talking about imagining you were sat having a meal with jesus Mm. as you're taking communion and we were take we were there and i just there was just this great sense of love came down and i just felt like god said he's in my keeping Mm. i'm taking care of him that's awesome i love it i love that and that some of the stuff you've shared as well about the ways in which after prayer asking people for prayer mm-hmm. you could just tell god was there you know mm-hmm. sometimes um it just needs to be experienced but to mm-hmm. know that even in those situations mm-hmm. you know the fact you said you felt peace mm-hmm. in the midst of that you know mm-hmm. the bible does say there's peace that passes understanding yeah. that god brings and the understanding in that situation would lead to all kinds of anxiety mm-hmm. all kinds mm-hmm. of worrying all kinds of fear but the fact you experience peace yeah i think that in itself is such a huge testimony yeah. Yeah. uh that god yeah. was real to you and yeah. is real to you and yeah. has been there through all of it for you well we're going to stop for some music we're going to talk uh, more with emma sadly in our last part of this interview i wish we could talk for a lot longer but um yeah we're going to talk more with emma right after this You're listening to Cross Rhythms Plymouth, 96.3 FM, and uh, it's been a real privilege and pleasure to speak with Emma Marlowe here on Life Stories, and uh, it's the final part of the interview. Honestly, it's always the saddest thing. <laughs> I feel like we could talk for so much longer. And uh, Emma, you know, I've, I've thanked you off air and, and things, but I really am so grateful for you sharing what you have shared, the, the courage it takes to share, uh, you know, what would be for anyone the hardest season of their life, and still is, you know, I yeah. think losing a son losing a child losing anyone to cancer that you love is immensely painful so there is that real pain um 
but that is also what makes i think the the peace that you've experienced the presence of god in amongst it um so real you know i think uh, you mentioned cory ten boom in the interview yeah. people who've gone through persecution persecuted christians people who hold on to faith come through the other side mm-hmm. and they're different for yeah. it you know i wanted to ask you in this section where it's left you now uh and I guess also why you wanted to share it because some people might be going why is this person wanting to do this on radio (laughs) but I know that's a really important thing for you and actually is part of your processing now what where are you at with the whole process now yeah um you know daily uh we think about James hourly we've just had the year anniversary since he passed away and um we'd kind of not sure really what to expect it's all such new ground and we'd set the day aside and uh Carl my husband and I were just saying you know what we miss him today just as much as every day Mm. every hour every day we think about him he's Mm. in our you know we do things that try and bring him into our today so you're asking like how it is that I'm wanting to tell the story of James but it's because it brings him into our today it feels like a tribute to him yeah um it makes him seem just that bit closer yeah yeah to us really um that veil feels that we talked about that veil between heaven and earth and and I think when we talk about him and we share memories um that veil feels thinner again yeah yeah, yeah. and the fact of the i suppose the gift of who he was mm-hmm. for the time you knew him mm-hmm. on this earth and yeah. the hope of what you'll know him in the future yeah. becomes yeah. more real yeah for you then personally uh, you mentioned uh, a time in scotland and sort of i suppose the whole process of this last mm-hmm. year of losing him mm-hmm. uh grief of course has been very real and very painful yeah. um but tell us a bit about that particular journey and, and where you feel you're at with faith because I, I f- yeah. you mentioned you feel in a place of wanting to help other people who've gone through similar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, I think I was really naive about grief sure. before. Um, you know, when you ever lost like grandparents, you know, the natural order of things. Yeah. And um, But you never expect to lose your child. It kind of, it just it's the wrong order of things isn't yeah. it i you know you think you expect to lose people in a certain way and and um it really this last year has been really hard really mm. painful um you know we miss james every hour of every day and we long for him to be back you know we're disappointed he's not here of course. with us and there's things that we do as a family where we feel you know if only james were here kind of thing but his his personality and his character was very much like you seize the day you know you go out you make the most of it what you're waiting for and often now there's there's times when I could almost hear him on my shoulder going oh mum just get on with it (laughs) just do it you know make the most of it but um it it has been a really dark time it has been really difficult I think I was very naive about grief um and I think you know as a society we're quite clinical Mm. about we can be quite clinical about grief you know you yeah. you have your six weeks and then you go back to work and you carry on and and I did go back to work after six weeks and I think it was like that hope of clinging on to something normal um yeah. the team at PCC were amazing and they they really cocooned me I suppose um and looked out for me and cared for me and but I, I just it was so hard to function so I did end up taking some time out um and just really withdrew Um, with Jesus really more than anything just to process this sadness and just to understand and just to feel those feelings because I think you know there's a tendency to stuff them down and to like create a veneer over the top of them but you know I think you can grieve well Mm. and you can grieve deeply and um, I read a book um, by Malcolm Duncan it was about October time last year called Good Grief Mm. which I highly recommend to anybody who is going through the dark times of grief it was fabulous book and he happened to then he happened to come to pcc and was there and did an evening service there and it was just um he spoke so much truth when somebody hits i I mean i remember being really upset at the service but it wasn't because he upset me it Mm. was because he was describing how it absolutely felt yeah and and the relief in that was just incredible um so it's been it's been difficult Mm. and you know, God has just brought the right people in at the right time. I went to a conference in January up in Glasgow and um, it was a prophetic conference and they were talking about the power of prayer and they were saying, when you've been through something, you then have the authority in God's name to pray over other people that they may be accelerated or healed through that process. And yeah. um, and while I was there, I asked one of the 
team if they would pray for me I said my son died like it was six months ago then and I said um, died of cancer but that was all I told them and they prayed off disappointment and they prayed off mum guilt um, and something just left this I felt absolutely drunk afterwards <laughs> um, something just left and when yeah. I came home and my husband was like what has happened to you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like just God just God did it and uh, yeah they they just prayed it off me and it was the most incredible acceleration mm. through the grief process um, and it's just left me with a really big desire of of drawing alongside other people that are grieving mm. um, you know we did we also did the bereavement journey which HTB okay. um, run as well and we did that online and I know there's some churches in Plymouth that run it and I'll, I would love to be a part of that um, and it just such a healthy way to acknowledge those feelings yeah, yeah, just yeah. and to learn to live in the absence of the person yeah, yeah, that yeah. you're loving you yeah. know um, yeah our relate my relationship with James continues mm. he just isn't here to receive what I have to give him I'm still his mum yeah. I'm mum to three but he's just not here to be able to receive it right now and uh, one day I'll be with him and um, you know we'll get to be a family yeah. as we are you know as we are yeah. but um yeah i just i feel this huge desire now just to draw alongside people really um and sit with them in their grief yeah i can't fix them yeah only god can fix them and yeah just to just to help them really so i'm hoping like towards the end of the year maybe to do some kind of um memorial service uh, or create a space where people can come and um and just acknowledge the loss of mm. a loved one yeah 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 and it's as you say it's so important to be really rounded in this you mm -hmm. know to recognize it is really painful mm -hmm. that disappointment is real that the mm -hmm. upset is real mm -hmm. um because stuffing those feelings down being stoic even being religiously stoic in the mm -hmm. sense of like oh well he's with jesus it's fine like that isn't yeah. going to help anyone mm -hmm. um but there is real hope and yes. there is a real sense of, as you say, you know where he is. You feel real peace about that. Your whole family do. Yeah. I remember doing an interview with a, an apologist um, about suffering and about the question of suffering. And mm -hmm. for people, it's a real block to them having faith. And actually, he, when I asked him a question, he personalized it. He said, well, the reason is because they've been through suffering because it mm -hmm. hurts. Mm -hmm. And we have to acknowledge that. Yeah. But the problem is, if you turn away from God, if you mm -hmm. choose to say there is no God, become an atheist or anything like that, well, you're still left with the suffering. Yes. Yeah. That hasn't changed. You just yeah, don't yeah. have the hope and yeah. i think one thing that's so beautiful about what you're sharing is it's so clear that you have so much hope the very fact you're sat here is the fact you have hope yeah. Yeah. now for other people so that's yeah. awesome I, i'm kind of putting you on the spot here a little bit but okay. you obviously work for pcc yes, that might yeah. be the best place but if there's anyone listening to this who's thinking man i'd, I'd love to just connect in some way would, yeah. would you be open to that is that yeah. something people can connect is it yeah. best they connect with the church is that kind of yeah um so i i'm in the administrative role in Plymouth Christian Centre. You'll Center. get the emails. So, so yeah, I get the emails. So contact at Plymouth Christian Centre yeah. um, or via Cross Rhythms here. Yeah, I guess if they contact absolutely. you here as well, then you can forward on to me as well. So, yeah, perfect. Yeah, um, but check out the Plymouth Christian Centre website and you can pick up the links there. Yeah. So love great. it that's really good and um yeah contact details for us are info at crplymouth.co.uk check out our website crossrhythms.co.uk slash plymouth and if you've just tuned in for the last part of that section and it's relevant uh we will have it up in full on youtube uh cross rhythms plymouth and on our website crossrhythms.co.uk slash plymouth so emma thank you so much uh for your time thank you for sharing that and uh, we wish you all the best well thank you very much for having me and and letting me talk about james and uh yeah and bringing him into this day yeah. and um yeah and for all that God's done. Thank you. It's amazing.